Axolotls, Ambistoma Mexicanum, the real-life Pokemon. These animals go by many different names and are one of the most recognizable weird animals that people have heard of. And now you're here watching this video because you realize that they can be kept as pets. This video is going to give you the general care info that you're going to need to be able to take care of an axolotl as a pet. Keep in mind, this is not a fully comprehensive guide. There's always more to learn. So please, please, if you're considering getting an axolotl, do your research, read up on care sheets, watch other videos so that you can make the most informed decision before getting one as a pet. With all that being said, I'm the Turtle Girl and this is the Axolotl Care Guide. First, let's take a look at axolotls as a species. By looking at their natural environment, we can see what conditions they best thrive in and replicate that as closely as possible in their habitat. Ambistoma mexicanum, which is the scientific name for the axolotl, hails from lakes in Mexico, specifically Lake Xochimilco. Unfortunately, they are functionally extinct in the wild and can't really be found there, but they are easily bred in captivity. They prefer cooler temperatures, slower moving water, not too much bright light, and plenty of places to hide. The average full-grown axolotl will grow to be about 10 to 14 inches, although there are bigger examples. And the wild type that occurs naturally is a dark gray or brown that's a little bit mottled and speckled so that they can blend into the substrate. In captivity though, there are many different color morphs available, ranging from albinos to golden axolotls to even chimera axolotls, which are split down the middle. And this is an anomaly that occurs when the eggs are developing. They thrive on a diet of insects, specifically worms, such as earthworms, bloodworms, or blackworms, and they can live to be up to 15 years old, sometimes even longer if they're really well taken care of. That's a basic rundown on the axolotl. Now let's talk about some care specifics, starting with the habitat. Like I said, axolotls can grow anywhere from 10 to 14 inches as adults, so you want to provide a habitat with lots of space to swim. This usually means an aquarium of 20 gallons minimum for for a full-grown adult. A 40-gallon breeder is great though, and they can definitely use that space. If you get your axolotl as a baby or a juvenile, you could start them out in a 10 or 15-gallon tank, but you will need to upgrade that and they will grow very quickly as you feed them. Speaking of feeding, the diet of axolotls is really quite simple. You have just a handful of options, honestly. That would be earthworms, bloodworms, or live blackworms. Those are your primary feeding options. People say that axolotls can live on specially formulated axolotl pellets, uh, and some breeders will sell these. I got some when I first got Mochi, my leucistic axolotl, and that never really worked out for him. He just always preferred earthworms, and earthworms are just a very easy food to feed. You should make sure you rinse off the dirt on them, and then you can feed your axolotl. As far as frequency, it kind of depends on the age. When they're younger, you want to feed them more often, so once a day. If they're adults, you may want to skip a day in between, because otherwise you might find yourself with a really fat axolotl. <laughs> For frozen bloodworms, which I also occasionally offer, I have a bowl in my tank and I actually defrost the bloodworm cube and then put the bloodworms inside the bowl and then the axolotl knows to eat from the bowl. You can also feed them directly from a turkey baster. You may have seen other videos on YouTube like this where they just swim straight up to the turkey baster and eat it. I just find that bowl training your axolotl is the cleanest way to do it because then it all just stays in one spot. Now let's talk about another really important part about axolotl care and the axolotl habitat, and that is filtration. Because axolotls are aquatic, that means they are living in this body of water that they are also pooping in and that they are eating in. Basically, they're making a mess in there and you need to be able to keep it clean. Filtration helps to break down some of this waste by way of the nitrogen cycle, which you should definitely research. And then it also filters out some of those physical particles that are floating in the water column. The catch with axolotls is that a lot of water movement and a lot of water flow can stress them out. And so you want to avoid a super heavy current when you are picking a filter for your aquarium. 
You can use power filters slash hang on tank filters. These work really well as far as filtration, but they can be faster moving. So you need to either block that flow with a decoration of some sort or break it up with some plants, or you can use a different type of filter. I personally prefer to use a sponge filter. This type of filter is driven completely by air and the bubbles rise up, which creates a suction effect that circulates the water through the sponge. This is not the most effective as far as keeping the tank looking clean, but it has a lot of space for beneficial bacteria to grow that are helping to break down the axolotl's waste. My other tip that goes along with filtration is just spot cleaning your axolotl tank. It's really easy to take a turkey baster like this and just whoop, suck the poop out of the tank so that it's not decomposing in there. And that also does wonders for keeping the tank clean. However, regardless if you're spot cleaning or not, you need to have filtration, number one. And number two, you have to do water changes. Water changes are just a fact of life if you have an aquarium. The easiest way to achieve this is with a five gallon bucket and a aquarium siphon. I would try to do a 20% water change bi-weekly if I'm spot cleaning and if I'm not 20% every single week. This will really help with your axolotl not being sick or stressed, which obviously we wanna avoid. <laughs> Speaking of stressed axolotls, one of the easiest ways to stress your axolotl out is by not maintaining a low temperature. Usually room temperature is not really sufficient for axolotls, especially during the summer if you don't have air conditioning, like me. <laughs> You want their tank to be staying in the mid to low 60s. Going to 70 and above is really just a big no-no. They can get super stressed. It can take years off of their lifespan, but it can actually be a little bit difficult to maintain a lower water temperature. So how can you do that? There are a couple of different approaches to keeping the temperature down, which I've done a video on actually up here. Uh, but let me just share really quickly a few of them with you right now. The first method is the possibly most consistent, but also the most expensive, and that is using an aquarium chiller. This basically pulls the water from your tank, cools it down, and puts it back into the tank, but these units can run, you know, a couple hundred dollars, so bear that in mind. The other way you can cool your tank is by using the power of evaporation and aeration. Basically, if you have an air stone or a sponge filter that's making bubbles on the surface of the water, this will create evaporation, which in turn actually cools the tank. You can also opt to leave the tank uncovered or put a fine mesh or screen top as opposed to having an aquarium hood because that removes some of the insulation and allows the heat to escape through the top of the tank. And then a really effective way to cool the tank down a few degrees is by running a fan that's blowing water across the surface of the water that's blowing air across the surface of the water. And this again creates more evaporation and allows more of that heat to escape. Like I said, you're just aiming to get your water temperatures to the mid to low 60s. I will link an aquarium fan that I've used before in the description below. So definitely check that out. It's way cheaper than a chiller. And I would say, at least in my experience, nearly as effective. Now on those really hot days when a fan and an air stone are not cutting it, then check out the video I mentioned earlier for some other ideas on how to keep your tank cool. All right, hang in there. We are almost to the end of the video. There are just a couple more things to think about when considering axolotl care. One of these things is decorations. Obviously, you want your axolotl to feel at home. You want them to feel confident in their environment and not have to be afraid of being, you know, eaten by predators. Not that we are going to predate on our pet axolotls, but you know, they don't really have much going on in their brain. So we want them to feel safe and secure. One of my favorite ways to provide decorations is by using PVC pipe. You can buy this at the hardware store really inexpensively. And if you get some joint connectors that are, you know, three to four inches in diameter, those should be big enough for the axolotl to hide in. You can also use terracotta pots and live plants. The primary thing to take in consideration when buying decorations for your axolotl tank is does it have any sharp or pointy edges that could poke or harm my axolotl. Because axolotls are kind of squishy creatures, that's why I named my axolotl mochi, like the Japanese dessert, because they are soft-bodied amphibians, and so they can cut themselves, they can hurt their fins, they can hurt their gills. And so you want to avoid possibility of that. I tend to shy away from plastic plants for axolotls for this reason, and tend to go with live plants. So that is an option. Also make sure that the axolotl cannot eat any decorations that you're 
putting in the tank. So anything with like really small pieces or smaller sized rocks, don't do that. Speaking of small rocks, let's talk about substrate. Don't use gravel with your axolotl. I mean, you can, but they're kind of dumb and they have been known to possibly eat it and it could possibly cause impaction. So just bear that in mind. I prefer sand or bare bottom. I would encourage you to use sand as well because it looks really nice, but if the axolotl does eat it, it can pass it through its system. But then at the same time, the axolotl still has something to grip on as opposed to a bare bottom or tile tank. The next thing is lighting. You may have noticed this whole time I don't have a light on my axolotl tank. I just have this ambient light coming in from a window over here. I choose to not provide a light for my axolotl because they do have sensitive eyesight and it can be a little bit irritating and or possibly stressful for them to have a light on at all times in their tank. If you do opt to have a light on, I would just have it on for a few hours a day, put it on a timer, and definitely make sure that the light is off at night. Having more decorations can help with this because then they can hide in the quote unquote shade and be in some areas that are less well lit, but Personally, I find that the ambient light works just fine. Keep in mind though, when placing your axolotl tank, don't put it in direct sunlight because that can heat the tank up very, very quickly, which again, as we've already gone over, you wanna avoid having high temps in your axolotl tank. All right, we saved the best thing for last, and this is the question that people always end up having, whether after they've had their axolotl for a few weeks or months or whatever, or even before they get it, Number one, can I get more than one axolotl? And number two, can my axolotl have any tank mates? Can I get any fish, anything like that? To the first question, yes, you can keep multiple axolotls together. Lots of people have done it successfully. The main concern is that they have been known to chew on each other's limbs, especially when they're younger. So just bear that in mind, make sure they have enough space, enough territory. If you have a 20 gallon long for a single full grown adult axolotl, I would provide at least a 40 breeder for two or more. So just upgrade or plan your tank size accordingly, depending on how many axolotls you're gonna have in the tank. As for the second question regarding other fish as tank mates, I would hesitate to say yes, it's possible. I've actually done it before and I have a video where I got a lot of hate for trying it out. I tried white cloud minnows. You just have to know that for one, the fish could possibly be nibbling or attacking the axolotl. And two, the axolotl is likely to try to eat the fish. You don't want them choking on the fish bone. So I would hesitate to say that there are really any good tank mates for axolotls. Personally, I think they're interesting enough in their own right that you don't need to have to worry about tank mates. I wouldn't do goldfish or anything like that because again, that's a whole other set of care requirements that you need to be fulfilling. Keep in mind too, the axolotls are cold water, so there's a lot of tropical freshwater fish that you just straight up can't keep with an axolotl because they have different care requirements. So those are some things to consider with tank mates. Feel free to leave your experience in the comments if you've kept your axolotl with anything. I have a whole video on that though that you can go check out and I think I've rambled long enough on this topic. I hope you found it helpful though. I really do enjoy axolotls. I think they're amazing creatures because they're just so weird and unique and interesting, kind of like me. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll be doing my best to respond to those and maybe some other people who are watching might have some tips and advice for you as well. And hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy it. I will see you guys next week. Have a totally awesome day. Bye.